uh, we can we can really achieve some reform. If you have time, I'd be happy to respond to questions or listen to any advice. Uh, a question. Given the budget problems of New York State now, how likely do you think it is that the legislature will act on the recommendations of your commission? Or if they have to be very selective, what do you think is most likely to be enacted? We did not recommend anything that would cost any significant amount of money to the legislature. And uh, we think that, well, we could quantify over a billion dollars in savings if our recommendations were uh, effectuated at the, primarily, of course, at the local level. And at a time when the state is in no position to increase aid, probably will reduce aid to local governments and school districts. It seems to me that this crisis is the perfect opportunity to get people's attention. You know, one of the greatest uh, things that I ever was involved in was as mayor creating a labor management committee in Jamestown. We have over, we had at that time over 10 percent unemployment and some uh, academic asked me one time, could you have done that without a crisis? And I said, you know, I don't know. We did have a crisis and I'll tell you it was helpful because it got everybody's attention. I mean, the joke around Jamestown then was the last one out, please turn off the lights. You know, that we were losing jobs, we we're losing industry and all that. And that got everybody's attention. And I feel the same way. Believe me, from my experience, Governor Patterson is not exaggerating the degree of our fiscal problem in New York. It's not as bad as he says. It's worse, in my opinion. And if the legislature doesn't face up to it, it's going to really be a problem. And they need to do it this year. Uh, this is sort of getting off my subject of local government, but it does have an effect. It, it really does. And, and um, it, the one thing I learned in Albany about New York State finances was how extraordinary an impact Wall Street had. You can read in the paper that 20% of our income taxes come from Wall Street. Well, 20% doesn't sound like too much. But I'll tell you, it can be the difference between 5% and 20%. It can go down like that. And 2007 wasn't such a bad year on Wall Street. Just think of what the tax receipts are going to be next April. We are going to be in big trouble. And they should act now. They should, they should take care of it. I hope that they don't penalize school districts and local governments. But they certainly aren't going to increase. And at a time when there's all these pressures, it seems to me maybe we can get the attention and we can get some reform we couldn't do in other times. Uh, you mentioned teachers' pensions. I taught for 15 years in Arizona where we're contributing 6% of our salaries, of my salaries, to the pension system. I taught 15 years in New York State and I was not contributing anything to my pension. And when the stock market goes down, taxpayer has to make up the difference. Whereas in Arizona, they just up the, pe the percentage that we contribute. So if it's an off year in Arizona, they'll go from 6 to 7% of our <coughs> income that goes into the pension system. New York State doesn't do this. Is there a reason why they don't? They're used to it. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason. It's political. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a very sensitive subject. And what we recommended was there be a new Tier 5 uh, for new employees, because I practically, I just don't think, over the objection of the unions and, and others, uh, you're going to change it for existing state and municipal employees. But I think you could for new. And I believe that all, all ought to be contributory. Um, I think it ought to be more like private uh, pension systems have become. Maybe uh, uh, define 
contribution rather than a defined benefit plan. But again, uh, this is a reform that's somewhat controversial, but I think makes sense. Yes. You know what? Maybe part of the problem is that our attitude. We don't have as much respect for politicians, maybe, as we should have. And we look around, and it seems there seems to be some cause. For instance, we're supposed to have people who are very conservative in Washington watching our money, and yet we have the biggest deficit ever. And I don't see why that reputation doesn't just go on to the rest of the politicians. Also, there are certain advantages that we are not willing to give up. For instance, if your child goes to a school that's not very well, you know, not very large, and you know the teacher, and your child is having problems, you can go up to that teacher, and if that teacher doesn't give you a satisfactory explanation, you can go to the principal, you can even go to the superintendent. But if it's something that's really Sorry. enlarged and big, you have so many choices of who to go to. So, I mean, you're handling a very, very a difficult problem. And then we're living in an age that I don't think the people who wrote the Constitution could figure out how to, how to take care of it because they could not foresee the power of television and advertising, of men who get on television. They're supposed to be very knowledgeable, they're analytical, and they come off as great thinkers, although they don't communicate very well, but they have a definite slant and you wonder, are they paid to take that definite slant? And if they are, then it should be marked as advertising. And they don't say they're advertising, but they are. There are a lot of little things that, that people worry about that we can't express to you. And no, so I don't think your problem is going to be solved very easily. <laughs> well, I agree with you. It's not easy. If it was easy, it would have been done a long time ago. But. I'll just say this. I've been now in the private sector for the last 15 years. I serve on four corporation boards of directors. That's not an easy job these days either, but on the whole, the people that I met in government are at least as honest, perhaps a little more honest, than people in the private sector. And one of the reasons I think so highly of the League of Women Voters is that you're not hammering on people all the time. You are conducting forums, you're listening to them, you're making decisions you know, on a rational basis, you're helping people to make those decisions, and um, it's certainly not easy. But, you know, you say the framers of the Constitution couldn't have envisioned, of course they couldn't have envisioned the technology, but boy, they set up a structure that's been remarkably capable and uh, uh, it seems to me that there's a lot that needs to be done but that particularly in the area of informing people about their choices uh, organizations such as the League can do a lot and uh, really if, if public figures are more honest than private, it's not inherent. It's simply that the, what was it, Judge Cardozo said, that the light is a disinfectant because you shine the light. You, you help to get away from just television commercials and these stupid cable people that shout at one another that my wife listens to constantly. Uh, yeah, I,